Hello. Today, let's talk about your birthday present. The text before us is from the Gospel of St. Mark, the second chapter, verses 23 through 28. Introduction, a bad birthday. Imagine, if you would, a birthday party, your birthday party. Now, by the way, you happen to live in the land of rules. And one of the rules in the land of rules is that on your birthday you receive one present for every birthday that you have celebrated. So, if you are 20 years old, you get 20 presents. Cool. And if you're 50 years old, you get 50 presents. Yes, indeed. And if you are my mother-in-law's age, who turns 98 next month, you get 98 birthday presents. Now, that sounds great, right? The second rule in the land of rules is that you must open all of your presents in as many seconds as you have had birthdays. So, if you have 20 presents, you must open them in, yes, 20 seconds. And if you have 50 presents, you must open them all in 50 seconds. And on your 98th birthday, you must open all 98 presents in 98 seconds. That's not going to be easy for a 98-year-old. And frankly, it's not going to be very much fun. I mean, wouldn't you much rather enjoy it a bit? Rather than receiving, opening, replacing, oh, one every second. Wow. I mean, I'm not sure that's even possible. Oh, and that brings me to the third rule in the land of rules. If you do not open all of your presents in the required amount of time, you lose all of your presents for that birthday. Yes, that's right. I'm sorry, but those are the rules. So, how old are you? Ah, well, that's how many presents you get. And if you cannot open all of those presents in that many seconds, you will not keep any of them. Not one this year. Ah, I almost forgot the fourth rule in the land of rules. You see, if for some reason you cannot and do not open all of your presents in the number of seconds that you are allotted, you not only do not get to keep any presents this year, but from now on, for the rest of your life, you will never, ever get another birthday present. No, not ever. No more presents ever. Happy birthday. Not really. Point one, keeping the Sabbath. As you might have guessed, the land of rules was pretty much where Jesus and his disciples lived in the first century. The Jews had Ten Commandments that could be summarized in two sentences, love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. The first three commandments taught you to love God by having no other gods before him, not taking the name of the Lord your God in vain, and remembering the Sabbath day to keep it holy. The next seven had to do with loving your neighbor by honoring your father and mother, not murdering, not committing adultery, not stealing, not bearing false witness, and not coveting your neighbor's house, your neighbor's wife, or anything that was your neighbor's. But in the land of rules, the two commandments that were explained by the Ten Commandments were actually an inner circle of laws. These were increased throughout the Hebrew Scriptures by a total of 613 laws, testimonies, and decrees. These were an outer circle of commands. But these 613 commandments were hedged about with halakha, written and oral laws, creating an outer, outer circle to keep Jews safe from breaking the outer and inner circles of laws. Lots of laws. So, for example, if you were to remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, Exodus 20, chapter 20, verse 10, said that you must not work. But the Pharisees determined what would be work. So, you may not pluck ears. You may not break off anything with a stalk. You may not plow. You may not sow or reap, or bind, or thresh, or winnow, or grind, or pound, or cut, some 39 forbidden related actions. 
That's what got Jesus in trouble. It was okay for his disciples to eat. They just could not work when they did it. And work included taking a piece of grain and rubbing it with their hands or even with their fingers. Not only was this forbidden, but it was a chargeable offense that was punishable by stoning, beating to death with stones. That was the land of rules. Jesus knew that the Pharisees had lost the heart of God. The commandment was a gift. Every seventh day, God's people were to stop work, rest, and delight in the love of God and of one another. It was the Sabbath. God did not need to rest when he created, but he knew that his creatures needed to rest. And so God taught them to rest and to be refreshed on the Sabbath with his word and his blessings. Take time to read scripture, pray, rest with your family, enjoy your life. This was God's heart. This was God's blessing. But the Pharisees made the gift into a list of rules. They took the birthday present and they attached so many laws to it that now he was only a demand and a pressure and a threat. Point two, the Son of Man speaks. So Jesus told them a story recorded in 1 Samuel chapter 21. One day, David and his mighty men were hungry. David entered the house of God and asked for the bread of the presents. The priest explained that this was consecrated bread and asked David and his men if they had kept themselves holy. When the priest was assured, he gave the bread to David. And now the ceremonial law said that only priests could eat that bread. But the priest determined that David and his men, who were not priests, by the way, were in need and that they had kept themselves holy. So if a ceremonial law of God could be suspended because the men were in need and their hearts were right before God, why could not a human law, a law made by man, be suspended because the disciples of Jesus were in need and their hearts were right before God? Jesus explained, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. In other words, God established the seventh day and made it holy as a gift. It was a present that human beings could stop and be refreshed with the word of God, with prayer, with family food and fellowship. The Sabbath was made by God in order to serve and bless his children. But the Pharisees mixed up God's intention. They misunderstood God's gift. For them, the Sabbath was only a series of laws in a large land of rules. They were very good at making and keeping rules. But they had lost the love of God for his children. Point three, Lord of the Sabbath, Jesus had more to say. Jesus had a different understanding. Jesus was the word of God who had created all things. And after creation was finished and human beings were made, God created a Sabbath day, a seventh day for human beings to be refreshed, to think of God, his commandments, and his blessings. Ultimately, all ten commandments that God had given were blessings to his children. They were all gifts. Have no gods. Remember the Sabbath day. Don't kill, don't commit adultery, don't steal or lie, don't want what, you, what is not yours. But human beings broke every one of the commandments. So the Son of God became a human, the Son of Man. And the God-man, Jesus, kept all of the commandments that you and I have broken. He was perfectly obedient to keep all of the blessings for us, and he committed not one of the sins that we have committed, he fulfilled every commandment, and he kept each of the presents. Then Jesus said, Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. That is, the Son of Man, who also is the Son of God, is the Lord of the Sabbath commandment, just as he is the Lord of all the other commandments. Jesus kept them all, and Jesus is Lord over them all. When Jesus joined you to himself by grace through faith, 
He came to live in you, even as he made you to live in him. Now his commandments are written on your heart, and you love them and you want to do them. In fact, you try to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. You try to love your neighbors as you love yourself. You truly strive and try to do these things because Jesus is inside of you. And the Holy Spirit guides and inspires you to keep those commandments. So, you truly want to live in love and forgiveness. You truly want to serve and even sacrifice for others because Christ has done that for you. But the truth is you still sin, you still break the commandments that are for your own good, and that's when that's when you really must listen to and understand what Jesus is teaching here. When he says that he is the Lord of the Sabbath. Conclusion. There really is going to be a great birthday party when you leave the church on earth and join the church in heaven. There really is going to be a great celebration, a feast of heavenly food and a present, gift-wrapped and placed before you. You see, your Lord Jesus has been standing for you all along. From the moment that he first gave you faith, Jesus has been standing before God in your place. Hmm. Instead of seeing your sins, God only saw the works of Christ. Instead of seeing your weak faith, God only saw the perfect faith of Christ. And instead of seeing your anger and unforgiveness, God only saw the holy love of Jesus Christ. Your Lord was always standing for you. Do you see that? God gave you his commandments as presents to guide you and bless you. But when you broke them, the Lord of the Sabbath, the Lord of the commandments, kept all of them for you. He made perfect and obedient offerings, perfect presence to God in your place. That's why you were welcomed into heaven, because Jesus offered his gifts, his sinless life, his sacrificial death in your place. They became your gifts to God by grace through faith in Jesus. Now, on your first day in heaven, Jesus has a present for you. This present is the gift that was offered to God in your place, and this present is the gift that God wants you to have forever. Go ahead. This present is for you. Don't be surprised. You know what it is, don't you? This is the present that was given to God, and now this is the present that is given to you. This present is yours forever. So, you can take your time opening it. No one will have a time clock and require you to open it in less than one second. No! You may take all the time in eternity to learn the intricacies and the extraordinary qualities of this present. Jesus Christ is this present. He's the Lord of the Sabbath. He's the Lord of the commandments. And he's your savior. Because of him, you no longer live in the land of rules and laws. By grace through faith in him, now you live in the land of mercy and love. This is the present that was given to God for you so that you could enter heaven. And this is the present that is given to you by God so that you may stay in heaven forever. Your present is Jesus Christ. Happy birthday. Amen.